Welcome to another installment of 5 Minute Tones. On today's video, I want to play around with the Freya D60 Less model. In the Axe FX3, this one is based on the lower gain side of a Freya Deliverance. Stephen Freya makes some of the greatest amplifiers today, probably of all time. Stuff like the Deliverance, the Pitbull, the Sig X are renowned designs, and there's not many people who know more about tube amps than Stephen Fryett. The Fryett YouTube channel is really good as well if you want to go and learn some more of that stuff. But I've done some videos in the past talking about the D60 more. I want to use the D60 less because I was playing around with this. Stock settings with my go-to Greenback Cab IR, LTTV Mix 7, the usual low and high cut that I use, tiny amount of recording Studio C reverb. At stock settings, I think this sounds fantastic. I'm playing a PRS in drop D with a Duncan JB in the bridge, like the most stock rock guitar pickup you can get. And it sounds like this. <laughs> quite a lot. It could do with like a little bit more gain on there. When I hit really hard, there's a nice crunch. It's very much kind of a Marshall sort of sound, but to my ears, the low end and the low mids are a little bit different. It's a little less chaotic and a little more controlled. So this is the fun part. This is where you twist some knobs. The gain control on here is going to interact with the bright cap value on the amp or the amp model, which you can see over here. So if I turn the gain up, it's going to get gainier, but also darker. If I just like that tone, but I want to add more gain, I would use the overdrive control. So there's like a flat gain control. What I like to do is actually turn the gain down just a little bit. So this is going to not only take out gain, it's going to make things sound brighter. I'm going to compensate by bringing the overdrive control up. Let's have a listen to that. <laughs> That to me has this kind of early 90s thing going on where it's right on the edge of exploding, but it's just below that threshold. It's pretty controlled. If you wanted more gain and more hair out of this, you could use the more model or you could just add a boost. I kind of like using the preamp tab boost. Let's start with the CC boost because this is my kind of usual go-to. Let's hear that. <laughs> Has that thing that a great Marshall style amp has where I want to really dig in with my right hand when I'm playing rhythm guitar, but it's just got its own character going on. And you can see there, you can really crank up the depth control on this amp and it doesn't get too uncontrolled. If I was going to sprinkle some fairy dust on this, like usual, I would go to the speaker tab and maybe play around with the speaker impedance curve. I kind of like the fractal load box impedance curve in here and I like to bring the speaker thump up, maybe bring speaker compliance up a little bit or we'll have a listen to that, there should be some real thud in here now on the low end. <laughs>
dig the shred boost on there as well. This model is pretty unforgiving. It's pretty raw sounding, maybe not quite as chaotic as say an 800 or a Plexi model, but it kind of makes you earn those notes, which I like. So fry it D60 less. Uh, again, you can do all of this kind of to taste, but I think the key there is balancing out the gain and overdrive control on there, playing around with the presence and depth. And then if you really want to, you can tweak the speaker tab and maybe add a little boost in there. It's a very straightforward way to get a great sounding hard rock guitar tone. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. And if you like what I'm doing on the channel, there are links to support what I do in the video description. You can grab that IR for free as well. Have a great day. I'll see you next time.